Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hi everyone. I would like to present my talk in this meeting entitled Follicular Unit Extraction Method of Hair Transplantation Basic Principles and the New Concepts. Slide 2. These are the main steps of FUE that we pass through them rapidly in this presentation. Slide number three, follicular unit extraction from its name is mean the removal of follicular units or harvesting follicular grafts directly from the scalp. It is now actually the most widely accepted and widely used method for hair transplantation all over the world. Slide number four. With a special instruments designed for FUE, the surgeon can harvest the required amounts of follicles one by one from the donor site, which is usually the occipital and lateral parts of the skull. Slide number five. When we compare the methods of FUE with the older method of hair transplantation, which is the FUT, we can see that the FUE feels and looks more genuine. And we have evenly removed hair and evenly distributed hair in the recipient area. It is less invasive and almost painless. Don't leave linear scar like FUT, which interfere with cutting the hair short after hair transplant, in addition to shorter recovery period of the patient. But the FUE is actually slightly more time consuming than the FUT. Consultation, slide number six. Consultation, we start with the decision of our assessment of the cause of hair loss and if it is suitable for FUE, then evaluate the severity. Of course, all we know that the androgenic alopecia is the main indication for FUE. And we usually we use the Norwood scale in order to evaluate the severity. And this is important because slide number seven, depending on the severity in Norwood, classification, we can evaluate roughly the number of the follicular units needed. After that, slide number eight. After that, we go to the donor site for a proper and more uh, detailed uh, examination and evaluation to see if the harvested follicles are enough to cover the recipient area. Nowadays, some physicians start to use digital trichoscopy in order to assess the donor area for the presence of good type of follicles, not just the number of hair follicles present. Slide number nine. Sedation is important because this operation is time consuming and probably associated with small pain during initiation of anesthesia. Slide number 10, anesthesia is important to step and it is usually local anesthesia type and we need both the short time anesthesia for immediate anesthesia and the long time anesthesia as we going to spend a few hours during the procedure. Slide number 11. The types of local anesthesia used in hair transplant FUE type is the nerve block. When we block the nerves that supply the surface of the skull, and then we go to field infiltration of the donor area and then of the recipient area. And here we use a special type of anesthesia, which is called the tumorous anesthesia that consists of long-acting 
or medium acting anesthetics in addition to normal saline and adrenaline. The addition of adrenaline is obviously done for reduction of the bleeding in the operation area. And the use of a tumor scent have many benefits. First, increase the intensity of the area so that the hair follicles or the follicular units can be easily harvested by the punches. And also increase the distance between hair follicles and they are more apparent for the operator in the, especially in the direction wise, and also elevate the follicular units from the underlying blood vessels and reduce bleeding. Slide number 12, this method is on this photo show the giving anesthesia for the recipient side. Slide number 13, after anesthesia, we start to harvest the follicular units. And usually there are special punches that can be used for this purpose. And we have two types of punches, dull type and sharp type. We start with the manual method for the punching of the follicular units, but <clears throat> this is time consuming, although it is still used in some clinics. Slide number 14, later amateurized punches developed with a variable uh, diameter from 0.7 to 1.2 millimeter that can be used according to the size of the follicular units in each patient. Slide number 15. There are some machines developed in order to make both uh, excision of the follicular units and extraction by the supplying the device with special suction uh, component that lead to suction of the follicular units and collect them without the need for intervention by the operator. And more in the slide number 16, more recently, robotic harvesting of follicular units is also available and have ability to harvest up to 1,500 follicular units per hour, but it is slightly expensive. Actually, the punches are either, as we say, dull, that can be extended deeply into the follicular units because there is less risk of transection of the uh, follicular units, but the sharp punches are allowed to go only two or three millimeters from the scalp surface to avoid transaction of the follicular units. After punching, we remove the excised follicular units by forceps. Slide number 18. This photo show how the forceps can remove the excised follicular units. Slide number 19. These are some of the extracted sorry, extracted follicular units with variable number of hair in each one. Some single, double, triple, or even four or five hair in each follicular units. Slide number 20, the donor site usually here by itself within few days. Slide number 21, the harvested uh, follicles need to be prepared for implantation and also stored in good situation until the recipient area will be ready for implantation. These are usually stored and prepared in a cold ringer lactate. First, we separate the transected follicles from the healthy and fully uh, follicles with the hair ball, and then we arrange them on a separate gauze pieces, and each piece contain about 100 follicular units, and also we can even separate this with single hair, or double hair, or triple hair, and separate gauze pieces for further need during implantation. 
This is could, should be done in the cold solution to reduce the metabolic requirements. And some physicians now add meso hair to the solution to give more nutrient to the follicular units and increase their uh, length of their lives before implantation. Slide number 22. Now we move to the recipient area. There are two important steps in the recipient area. First, the hairline design. And there are many techniques for this, but in general, we use uh, the percentage of Da Vinci golden ratio that divide the face into three parts. And also we have to uh, remember that the hairline in male is M-shaped with presence of temporal recession. And also we try to make the hairline design as much as natural. Slide number 23, we have some measurements from the glabella in the center of the hair and from the lateral canthus on the lateral sides. And the line from the lateral canthus should be at least 2 cm longer so we can decide the temporal recession point. Actually, the hairline design is depend on occupation age of the patient and even desire of the patient. Slide number 24. We can even make the hairline design before cutting the uh, hair short before harvesting the follicular units. Slide number 25. The hairline usually make in a zigzag form. So it would be as natural as possible. And usually we implant single hair zone in the anterior parts and increase the density as we go backward. And the maximum density will be in, the, in this area, in the far look of the hair. Slide number 26, the female hairline is concave and we have to avoid the temporal recession. The second important step in the recipient side is the making incision for the implanted hair to be put inside. And what is important is the direction of these incisions. The incisions can be done by smaller blades or by 18 or 19 gauge needles. And they have should special direction and the special angles as shown in this picture and this tinting of the angles should be done not only in the uh, vertical direction but also done in the as we go laterally and as we go down along the side of the scalp there is more tilting needed so the hair will be as much as natural and also the incisions should be distributed irregularly irregular and not in lines. Slide number 28. In the occipital area, we have to put the incisions in a word like that are uh, trans with transition until we reach the periphery, like this picture. So it will be just like the natural one. Slide number 29. When we use the blade, we can put the blade either in the sagittal or in the coronal uh, direction. The coronal direction usually used when they have only few harvested uh, hair follicles. Number 13, this picture show the implanted hair in the coronal direction and in the sagittal direction. Actually, there is no much difference except it the coronal direction give more aberrant density for the hair. Number 31. Recently, there are many uh, devices developed or instruments that make more than one plate at the same time to increase the speed of the opening of the incisions in the 
recipient area. After that, the collected units will be implanted one by one in these openings. Slide number 32. This is a usually a stressful condition for the follicular units. So after implantation, although the hair may grow for two weeks or so, it usually fall after two to five weeks and then start to regrow again. And regrow may take three to six months. And actually the final results may take eight to 12 months. Post-operatively, slide number 33. Post-operatively, we advise the patient to make washing of the area to avoid the dryness of the oozing, frequent washing. We have the main problem of post-operative edema, which can be reduced with systemic steroids and simple explanation and use of bandage to prevent reach the edema to the eyes. The process, natural process of shedding of the hair after the hair transplant is reduced nowadays by using of PRP, stem cells, low-level laser therapy after the hair transplantation. And if the hair not regrows well after a few months, we can use every even scalp micropigmentation. Slide number 34, this patient done the operation in our clinic. Slide number 35, this is another patient that even get more density than the previous one by FUE. And I think it to the FUE it still and, uh, uh, and remains the gold standard method for hair transplantation. And I think we need, we see, sorry, many advancement in this method in the near future. Slide number 36, thank you very much. And I hope we met in my city, the whole city and Najaf al-Ashraf. Thank you very much.